Hey everyone, so I'm officially on summer break, so that explains the change of scenery. I'm at my parents' house, but I wanted to send out a quick video inspired by one of the academic YouTube channels that I follow from a guy named Simon Clark. He's a PhD student uh, researching physics, and he vlogs about uh, daily life as a PhD student, and one of his recent videos was titled How I Became a Researcher. And this was essentially a academic biography from when he was an undergraduate up through his PhD studies. And he encouraged all of his followers, especially his followers in academia, to post their own videos about how they became a researcher. So I pitched this to my Patreon supporters and they voted that I should definitely make a video about this. So here it is, a short how Andrew Henry became an, a religious studies researcher. I actually didn't consider myself a religious studies researcher. I always thought of myself as an aspiring Roman historian. I was a history major, I took as much Latin and Greek as I could, but by the time that I was considering graduate school, I only had two years of Latin and one year of Greek under my belt, which made me a completely uncompetitive PhD applicant. Uh, basically, any ancient history PhD program wants to see you having at least three years of Latin and three years of Greek, preferably four or five years of the languages. If you don't have the languages mastered, your application is basically thrown out. And I knew this, so I basically applied only to master's programs and what are called post-baccalaureate programs in classical languages. Uh, these post-bac programs are basically boot camps for ancient languages. They just cram as much Latin and Greek into your brain over the course of one year and then set you loose on the academic uh, PhD application market and see where you land. They are cheaper than master's programs, but the downside is you don't get a degree out of it, just a lot of Latin and Greek in your brain. So all this to say I got into the University of Pennsylvania's post-baccalaureate program, I started taking higher level Latin and Greek, and I started working at the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology, where I worked on a really cool project called the Cuneiform Digital Library Initiative, where we were scanning uh, ancient Sumerian and Babylonian uh, tablets to put them up onto a digital library. So that was pretty crazy, holding two, uh, 3,000 year old clay tablets and thinking to myself, I better not drop this. So that aside, the way PhD applications work in the United States is you apply for the program sometime in the fall, usually by December or maybe even early January, and then you hear back if you got in by February, and maybe sometimes as late, late as March. If April rolls around and you still haven't heard back from the schools that you applied to, you probably didn't get in. And I was feeling pretty confident. I'm at the University of Pennsylvania, I'm working at an archaeology museum. Uh, sure, I'll only have two years of Greek and three years of Latin, but my GRE scores are fine, my recommendation letters should be pretty good. I'm, I'm confident. So I applied to 15 schools, and I was rejected by 15 schools. Yep. So talk about a major setback. I had pinned my entire career on getting into one of these PhD programs. I, I made a, you know, several thousand dollar gamble going to the post-baccalaureate program, and I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. So in a, in, in a moment of desperation, I quickly signed up for a second year of the post-bac and said, hey, I'll give myself another chance. Another year of Latin, another year of Greek, another year of working at the Penn Museum of Archaeology. Maybe I'll get in next year. So did the whole thing over again. This time applied to 12 schools. I tried to be a little bit more strategic and I got three offers. Uh, two history departments and one religious studies department accepted me. And this is where I had to make a choice. Like I said, I always thought of myself as an ancient historian. So I applied to the, the PhD program in religious studies at Boston University because of the faculty there. They were researching the exact same thing that I was interested in, which was early Christian magic. But it also meant making that disciplinary leap. You're no longer a historian, you're going to be in a religious studies department. And that made me really nervous. I didn't know what to expect. In my mind, I, I only wanted to take classes in ancient Roman studies. I wasn't that interested in modern religious studies theory or taking a class on, you know, modern Islam or something. You know, that just wasn't what I was into. But several factors came together that led me to choosing Boston University. So in the religious studies department, I started taking classes on religious studies methodology. I learned about Freud and Marx and Durkheim and Weber. I took classes that I never expected myself taking, like uh, Sufism and Islam. 
and I was hooked. It was so interesting, absolutely fascinating, and I just, pardon the joke, was converted to religious studies. So throughout the PhD program, I started developing my dissertation topic, uh, and I, I landed on the topic of analyzing the intersection between early Christian liturgy and early Christian magic. I was very interested in studying why certain liturgical phrases and slogans ended up on magical artifacts. And my training in religious studies methodology helped me land on this topic because I, I learned about performativity and orality in religious ritual, and it made me think differently about why liturgical slogans could be thought to be uh, ritually powerful. So at the same time, I was developing an interest in the uh, materiality of religion, the stuff and the objects that people use in religious ritual. So I took classes in archaeology. I, I excavated overseas in Athens to learn how to be an archaeologist. And I implemented this into my dissertation topic because I'm researching the amulets and inscriptions that had these magical liturgical phrases. I can talk more about my dissertation topic in a later video, but I bring it up to say that my research thrived in the interdisciplinary environment that a religious studies department offers. I have colleagues researching Islam and Buddhism and Hinduism and Judaism. I have colleagues that are anthropologists and sociologists and philosophers, and all these different methods come together to help help us get at what religion is and how it's working in the world. So even though this was intimidating to me at first, having come from a history department in my bachelor's degree, I have no regrets. Being in a religious studies department has been an amazing experience. It's broadened my mind and broadened my my approach to my, my own topic of study, early Christianity. So that's my short biography from a aspiring historian to a classical languages slash archeologist guy to a religious studies researcher. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for suggesting this topic. If you have any more questions about my biography or about uh, my dissertation topic, just put them in the comments below. And to everyone else, thanks so much for watching.